The business side of, of being a photographer protects the photographer. My job is to drive the number down. So if you don't know how to do a bid, you're losing money. My name is Monty Isom. I am a photographer in New York City. I am here to talk to you about the business of photography. What I'm probably most known for is my work with athletes. Nike, Adidas, HBO, Gatorade. I shoot most of HBO's boxing posters. I mean, anything that has something that sells something with an athlete usually has come knocking on my door. Now, I'm sure this is not your first F-Stoppers tutorial, and you've seen big, beautiful landscapes, and you've seen girls in bikinis. There will not be a girl in a bikini throughout this entire video. Doesn't that sound exciting? It's all for here. It's not about how to take a photograph, it's about how to book the photography jobs themselves. I believe a lot of photographers think that if they make great work, clients are gonna come flocking. The only way to make money in this business is to get your work in front of those people who hire photographers. Simple. These are all points of contact at agencies, and I'm going through, how many pages is this? I mean, it's like 18 pages of names. That's a lot of people to start from. There's a thousand people out there that can do a well-lit portrait. Hundreds of thousands of people that can do a well-lit portrait. What separates you from everybody else? And that's what we wanna see. We don't just ask me. It's not just some photographer saying this is how it is. We interview people from ESPN Magazine. We interview art buyers at major ad agencies like Deutsch. We interview creative directors at Beats by Dre. I wanted to make sure that we covered all markets. Some of the budgets these agencies have to spend on photography, it's, it's really astronomical. A small budget would probably be between 80,000 to 100,000. A bigger budget, probably 300,000. It's real easy to talk about hypothetical jobs and hypothetical budgets. In this tutorial, I include a lot of real estimates, real invoices. Now that we've looked through a whole bunch of line items, how much do you think this job costs? That's $160,000 in production expenses and that is before my fee and my usage. Filming this tutorial has really opened my eyes to what the industry is actually paying photographers. I mean, I think photographer day rates are probably like five to $10,000 is the one you see, 15 is more the seasons, and then the super high-end guys, you know, are 25 to 30. I mean, there's a couple of people that are like 75 or 100. I think licensing is a huge component of pricing your work. In most cases, my licensing fees are higher than my actual creative fee to shoot the job. In a lot of smaller markets, usage is not a concept that is just like, what? I have a day rate, and this is how it goes. Personally, I think you should try to, you should try to charge for usage, you know, that that's, that's the business, that's what we're supposed to be doing and it's the right yeah. thing to do. So this estimate that I have up, you see the usages are the POS and packaging, web and sales collateral for one year, I have it at $10,000 for a usage. Now what would you imagine all rights should be? It's gonna be a lot more or should be a lot more to be paid up front to do it. I've been a professional photographer now for maybe 14 years and I only knew a fraction of this stuff. When is an image copyrighted? From the moment you take it. But what I think a lot of photographers would be shocked to know that even though you have the copyright because you were the image creator, that does not afford you the legal benefits of statutory damages and legal fees from someone who you try to go after if they stole your image. When I register this online and send it to the Library of Congress, this is what I get back from them. It's a certificate of registration. It has a registration number, all my information. They brought in a new art buyer to deal with the project. She asks me, what is the number to make this go away? So I gave her a number, $101,000. She comes back, $101,000 purchase order issued that day. What did I do? Absolutely nothing, except copyright my work and protect the value of what I do. The info in this tutorial cannot be found anywhere else. This is an inside look at how the industry actually works. We needed to have a motorcycle at just the right angle. Uh, we needed to have a body that worked exactly with the dynos and, and at this kind of three-quarter angle. So we had to go back in and, and get the motorcycle and get Chris and, and the studio is gracious enough to provide us with all of that. Um, and then when, you, when we break this down, you'll see that, that his head is actually different than his body, which is very common. I'm sure there's a lot of photographers who are saying, 
Why on earth would you tell other photographers how to go about getting your clients, how to put together the numbers to compete with you? I'm trying to raise the entire standard of photographers and their business practices. By doing that, that's gonna help everyone. People aren't gonna be lowballing as often. When a photographer is coming in to show you a deck or something, you said not to have another brand's work right there in front of you when they're presenting to try to get your work. Would you prefer for a photographer to go and shoot a test shot that looks more like a Beats campaign? The photographer that's trying to get the job has no idea what we were shooting for. What we don't want is for you to try to copy something and not succeed at it. Then you're just like a poor version of what we've already done. Right. Which means you're not getting the job. Like what I like is to see your personal self that we can then say, man, this looks amazing. What if we put our blank in this environment with the style that they shot? When purchasing this tutorial, you don't just get the tutorial, you're getting real estimates that you'll be able to download and reference. You're gonna get real lawyer letters. You're gonna get real exchanges that I've had in negotiations of getting money from someone who's actually used my work. A lot of this stuff we're gonna go through in the tutorial, but you're gonna have these files as reference points. So my lawyer writes a lawyer letter to these people. Lawyer letter states, we have seen an infringement. It has devalued my client's work. We would like $25,000 from you in order not to litigate this. If we have to litigate and take it to court, we'll be asking for $150,000 in damages as this image now has no commercial value. Monty has assisted many of the most successful photographers on the planet, and he has some of the most unbelievable and hilarious stories that he would tell us every night after we were done filming. And we thought this has to be a part of the tutorial. So we created story time with Monty. So the president of the United States walks in the door. We have five minutes. Greg turns to him and says, Mr. President, my name is Gregory Heiser. I'll be taking a portrait today. He shakes his hand. And now the president turns to me and I put my hand out. He doesn't shake my hand. Instead, he looks at me and goes, Monty! Uh, Mr. President, can I have you look to, to my left? He goes, you want me to look at money? I can look at money. <laughs> Mr. President, could you unbutton your jacket? Now don't go show my belly button ring. Don't tell anybody about that money. When you're starting out, you're starting from scratch and you just don't know these things. You're getting 20 years of my experience in this one tutorial. A creative director and an ACD answer to a GCD. Now a GCD, or a group creative director, oversees a couple creative directors on a couple different brands. They make sure everything is in line with strategy as well as the rollout that they want for that particular brand. Now, above a GCD is an ECD, which is an executive creative director. An ECD is really one of like the idea people. We wanted this tutorial to apply to all photographers and all genres and all markets. So it was really important for us to sit down, not just with creatives in LA and New York, but also photographers and ad agencies in a small market like Charleston, South Carolina? Uh, the answer is yes, in smaller markets, lots of photographers are doing whatever kind of gigs that they can get. And two, that's, that's not a bad thing. Uh, for me, it shows me that they have a range and they're not just locked in on shooting product on white seamless, but they have some versatility. Very, very seldom do I get a client that says, hey, can you come shoot for us in New York or Chicago? There's plenty of photographers there and they're great. Usually they're coming here saying, hey, we need someone with local knowledge, can you, can you help us out? A lot of the clients that I get that shoot here are from outside of town. I went to an art college. The percentage of people I went to school with who are actually actively taking pictures, I'm not even gonna say a percentage, I'm gonna say like a number. I mean, we're talking like three. Going to school, they can't teach you everything that even we cover in this tutorial. Retouching could take five rounds, 10 rounds, 20 rounds. I mean, it could go on six weeks. I don't wanna wait to do the master invoice with retouching included on it and wait eight weeks before that's even included because I'm already gonna have to pay my hard costs and at 30 days, I've already paid the crew. So when you're starting this job with the art buyer, what you wanna do is say, Let's do one invoice for the entire shoot and let's do another invoice for the retouching. That would require two separate purchase orders from that art buyer. Just like all the tutorials in the F-Stopper store, this is a digital download, which means you can instantly download it, sync it to all of your devices and start watching it immediately. We have a cover rate, we have a spread rate, uh, a full page rate, and then we break it down from there. So half page, quarter page, and an eighth of a page. I really started doing an, my own equipment rental based on the fact that I wasn't making enough money in editorial and I needed to increase my margins, but there was no room to move on the fee. 
The equipment rental is $2,775, but I only made $1,000 on my fee. All of a sudden, my margins become much bigger and I start making more money on editorial. Everyone who buys this tutorial is going to have access to a secret Facebook group. You're going to have access to Monty himself and other commercial photographers around the world. All of your questions about pricing, bidding, licensing, they will all be answered in this Facebook group. Yeah, I mean, I just find that like presentation for an agency, for a photographer, for an art director, just how you show your work is, is almost as important, sometimes more important than the work itself. I know I have a campaign coming up mm -hmm. and you just happen to have that promo sent to me and it's something that I'm looking for at that moment, then it's kind of almost luck. But that yeah. happens so much. There's one guy I will not go off on my own unless I work for him. His name's Albert Watson and he is a legend. He says, uh, Monty, how old are you? I said, 24. He said, I was 29 when I picked up my first camera. He's like, you have a jump on me, and I've seen your work, it's good. He's like, all of this is attainable. It was like, Albert Watson, mic drop. He walks away, and all of a sudden, I'm, just, I'm like, I'm getting goosebumps now, like right now. There was no way in the world I wasn't going to be a photographer at that point. If you're a photographer who already has all the technicals down and is producing great work, but maybe you don't have the jobs that you really want, this tutorial is going to completely change your business. How much hustle do you have in you? And how much willpower do you have to say, I need to make this my existence? Hmm.